Welcome back. Um, we're here at Church Farms House Family on a beautiful day uh, back into June. And we thought we'd give you a little update. Um, so we'll walk you through the site and um, let you know what's going on. Had a, a little bit of the, uh, the old barn structure fell down, which is unfortunate, but um, it was never in the best of shapes, and um, which is why we have held off um, doing much work to it at the moment. And unfortunately, a couple of weeks ago, a big section of it fell down. It had a huge crack in it. We've had to liaise with the engineers um, and, and have them do several reports for quite some time. Um, so anyway, that's kind of why it looks the way it does now. Do you think that wall's going to stay in now? Um, I think it's going to be really difficult. Um, but, you know, the engineers advise us to take it down, but we've got to be careful that we don't contravene any sort of planning issues and that sort of thing. But it's hard, very difficult looking at it, very difficult to see, particularly because of the underpinning. There's, there's virtually no footings in it. So it's literally sitting on top of the existing ground. Um, and we've got to make up uh, the inside, which means we would have to do quite a bit of underpinning, which is what we originally planned on doing, but um, you can see because it's effectively just cobbles, it's not even coarse stone, is that as soon as you pulled out a meter section for underpinning, which is typically what you do, the whole thing, would, most of it would just collapse. And the other thing is, is that it, there's new openings to go inside that as well. Well, by the time you knock in the new openings and everything, the chances of it um, staying up are also very slim. Um, and you're, you're effectively disrupting so much of the fabric that it seems pretty pointless. But, um, but we've, you know, we've got to do it by the book. So um, let me show you plot two. This is the garage. which we're just using it as a store. Um, well, you can see they've just plied it out and we're just we're just basically gonna store stuff in there because we're running out of room on site. Um, we won't put the garage door on it yet because it'll just get trashed. Uh, I don't know, probably what you saw last on here. Some of the walls were up, but now we've got the roof structure in place. All the trusses are in, in the single story section. We're waiting on some cavity trays to finish this end gable where it goes up to two stories. Um, waiting on some steel, um, waiting on the floor. Um, again, some of this stuff is harder to get um, just because it's with the lockdown and everything, uh, everything's been a bit slower. Um, but now things are starting to pick up again. Um, so we hope probably to be roofing this in the next couple of weeks. And we've got some dry stone walls you can kind of see through there. Not not technically a dry stone wall because obviously they're going. To, it's going to be single sided. Normally it's it's sort of uh, sloped and battered up so that it, it, that basically holds itself in place. And um, when you're only doing one side, we'll have to anchor it and, and fix it mechanically. And um, there's a bit more to it, but they'll be doing that I think uh, first week of July. So that'll finish that up. Uh, we're just finishing the formwork on eight, and we're just prepping the floors in half of eight, plot eight. So you can see the formwork there. I think they're pouring that tomorrow. Uh, they're just pouring the concrete floor in plot six, though, uh, and that they'll they'll float and polish, give it a really smooth finish. Uh, they wouldn't do that in the other floors just because they're going to get covered with insulation and another screen in the other floor. Um, and then, of course, you can see up over there, that's plot nine. We're waiting on the big steel uh, frames to go in, which is the back end of this week. Um, they're just putting up the scaffolding, as you can see. And um, once those steels are in place, we've got one section of floor left to install, um, you know, the con concrete subfloor. And then that's ready for the SIPs, which is coming hopefully mid-July. Mid we'll start installing that. So that'll be the second unit. So let's walk in seven, have a look at that. Don't you step in your head. <laughs> oh, 
It's all right, you can be on TV. Um, not without your high vis jacket, of course. <laughs> Well, there's, there's, a, there's a fair amount to talk about in here, but obviously you can see a glazed screen is in place. So luckily the steel placement, um, everything uh, worked out uh, as we hoped it would. Um, as we discussed, it has to be pretty precise. If, if you turn the camera around, you'll see kind of some of the things that we're doing at the moment. We actually did add these, these two big windows off of this uh, room upstairs, um, just because just to take advantage, basically, some of the views out this way. Um, but you see everything is, is either battened with a two by one um, batten when it's got onto ply, or in the case of all of these walls, you've got a whole wall here. The reason for that is it's not required for SIPs, but we want to hide all of the steel. We want to hide everything that is to do with the structure. So even the big glue lamb purlings that you see and the, basically the entire steel frame gets um, gets covered in so that just plasterboard just runs up to the window. Um, so they're just working on that at the moment. They've done the walls. Now they're just going to work on the ceiling. Um, and then you can see some of the MBHR system um, they've started to install. So those four up there will be clean air coming back in. And if it's cold, that's heated clean air that's usually two degrees below the internal uh, temperature at the time, just so that it's not um, pumping in the air, a bunch of cold air that's gonna mix with the warm air that you're trying to create when you're heating the house. Um, if like at this time of year, it would just be pumping in cool air. And then the three here at the bottom are basically the, uh, the extraction uh, points for the room. And that also kind of ties in with what's happening in the kitchen. So any warm, moist air is being extracted through those three points. Everything's being fed back to a, a central um, piece of equipment that filters the air and does all the fancy stuff. Um, so yeah, windows, um, guys, you can see the guys that are out here at the moment are actually um, putting this uh, special trim tape that we are using. It's a, a product from um, SIGA, uh, S-I-G-A. Use Fentrim IS2, the high performance adhesive tape for exterior applications for wind and rain tight bonding of window and door frames to solid masonry. It's a, uh, an incredibly adhesive uh, meant, meant for external use. Um, you use a primer with it as well, but it basically just um, it will last forever um, externally. So they're basically just going through and uh, taping over the uh, sole plate, uh, taping the membrane over the sole plate to the plinth to create a proper weather tight seal and an air seal as well. So obviously, keeping in mind that we're trying to make this as airtight as possible. This is the utility in here, which you can kind of see, give you an idea of all the ductwork that has to come back to this. So this, um, these are all, well, they're, they're either input or output um, ducting. Um, and they'll all feed back to a unit that's in, that's in a housing eventually. It's got like a manifold that takes all these pi pipes into it. So that will just neatly, everything will feed into this one machine, which is, well, it'll probably end up being uh, quite tall. Um, so obviously it won't stick out like this, but there's a lot of work in it. Um, so you can see, again, you can see this one in here. He's positioned already, um, so that's extraction. Um, so all the bathrooms, utilities, boot rooms, kitchens, that will all have an extraction point. Um, all the habitable rooms will also have then uh, uh, input, um, this cold air. Um, coming in. Also, if you just look down on the floor here, obviously they've got to run some pipe work that they need to get to places where they can't get to through the walls. Um, so this is a kitchen island. The waste is slightly in the wrong place, but that can be cut off and, and, and taken over because it's, uh, it's only a two-inch waste anyway for the sink. 
Um, they've got to run all that first before we put the insulation down for the underfloor heating. Um, so, yeah, it's same with the gas. Uh, I see they haven't, they haven't run the gas yet um, to the cooker uh, position, which is basically the middle of this wall. Uh, the gas is a yellow pipe, so you will see when you're looking down, um, you'll occasionally see a yellow pipe as well, which will feed to the fireplace as well, which we'll see in the lounge. We've got all the bellixes ready to go on the roof. I, I don't know if I mentioned last time that, um, oh no, I didn't, because that was, that, was, that was before COVID was. Um, we're, we've been waiting on the roof for quite some time because Katnick, they really shut everything down and they've only been back into production for a couple weeks. So we had all the roofing materials, luckily for plot seven, but we didn't have the gutters, which we need the gutters in order to install the roof because they all, um, we need to make sure that they're, everything is fit in the right position because it all happens behind this cladding. And also they're supposed to come and do some training with us on some of the more difficult aspects of uh, fitting the Velixes, uh, any pipes and things like that that we've got coming out of the roof. It's standing seam, so it's a little, it's not quite as forgiving, obviously, when you've got big sheets of, of, of metal like that. You need to make sure, uh, to make it look neat and tidy, that whatever kind of flashings and stuff that you're creating, um, uh, well, you know how to do it, basically, and we don't. So they're going to come up and show us how to do some of that. Um, hopefully in the next couple weeks, because we could really do with getting it um, covered over. We've had to re-felt it once. We haven't put the good felt on yet. That's really expensive, but can only le be left on for about six weeks. Otherwise it degrades in, in the weather. Roofing felt is really meant to go on and then immediately be covered. Um, but because it's been so long, we've had to recover it again just to keep you know, water, moisture, and stuff getting inside. So that's been an unfortunate expense, but um, you don't want to leave the sips uncovered. So um, hopefully next couple of weeks, you can see outside as well. You can see, we did spend that uh, the time that we that we had in lockdown uh, painting a hell of a lot of timber. Um, that's all the timber for the cladding on the outside, which we'll look at later. So you've got some three by two, and then you've got some two by one. It's painted black because we don't want to see whatever is behind. Because we have some small gaps in the timber. That's part of the design. Um, and it's that's all treated timber, but then we also paint it with a um, a really good exterior uh, paint. Um, I mean, it should last for 50 years, really, because it's not it's not really exposed to the elements. But um, we want to make sure that we don't have to come back to anything. So, great. Right. So. Um, Again, up here you can see these are effectively three Velux windows. So this is glazing going all the way up. You can see the other one on the other side as well. Um, but we have had to cover over them, obviously, until we can get the uh, the guys from Catnix to come up and help us uh, put the roof on and install the, the Velixes. Um, so again, that's a, quite a big job. A little annoying that we haven't been able to get to it yet, but. Um, Hopefully, like I said, the next couple weeks. Um, obviously, this is a SIP panel, and then we're applying this two by one to it, and that's really just so we can run services without. Um, well, you can't you can't chase this out. You're not you're not really. I mean, you can core this out, so if you need to run a pipe out, but you don't real you don't want to be chasing out for cables and that sort of thing. The fewer holes uh, um, that get, that you cut through this product. Um, the fewer openings, whatever, obviously cuts down on the, improves the air tightness, obviously. So that's why we add that. We can run electrical cables. It's deep enough for back boxes, uh, for electrics. We can run pipes. Um, so all the external walls will have that. But some of the internal walls, it, it's here, but mainly only because it's got to follow down to a bit that we had to do it downstairs. So of course, because it's all open together, it all has to be done. Um, so you can see some more of this pipe that's coming up. Because there's another MDHR, the, the main sort of piece of equipment, is located in the garage down below here. So there's one there's one in each wing, because it's that big of a house. So the, all this will feed this side of the house, the other one will feed the other side of the house. So this is the room that we were in last time? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, come to think of it, uh, that's right. Um, yeah. Well, that, the roof wasn't on. There was just I don't even know if there's some side walls. But we were st we were just walking around on this one. Right? There was a couple of walls along here. No, was it? Another big bedroom. Again, you've got this, this oh, big uh, three section piece. Uh, here that's all. That's all supplied by Helix. Uh, we've got a dressing room and then an ensuite. So this upstairs doesn't adjoin, does it? No. Across. That's right. So you got two different staircases. Yeah. Uh, we are. We've got the materials are arriving to to create this staircase today. Now we're doing that all in block because I wanted more of a solid staircase there and because of the window that's in the sta staircase area, I wanted it to have a solid handrail to give it a little bit more privacy when you come down the stairs if you didn't want to cover the window there. Um, uh, and this is obviously has a screed and a insulation and everything, so it'll all feel pretty solid upstairs as well. So there's nothing worse in my opinion than having a squeaky staircase um, or just a a cheap sort of flimsy staircase in a very expensive home. So that could be clad in tile or stone or um, yeah, anything really. Cool. Alrighty. It is kind of warm in here actually. But it doesn't help that obviously we don't have, none of the Velixes are in. So it's a little bit hard to tell um, in some of the rooms where there are no Velixes and, and you've just got all the triple glazing, it's very quiet. And it's actually um, uh, much cooler or warmer than the outside temperature. Um, so it feels like we can already feel the effects of the SIPS panels and the triple glazing, uh, which is a good sign. Um, you can see there, they're just waiting for the um, concrete to go off of that garage. Um, it's got to dry to a certain degree so that they can start floating it. Um, so obviously they can, they can start kind of walking on it, but they're basically just polishing and polishing and polishing as it's drying out so that pretty much by the time they finish, it's more or less dry. Well, it, it, it is dry. You, you can walk on it the next day, um, but it's just absolutely smooth and it looks perfect, which is what we're trying to do as much as possible. So. Um, so if you look at this window here, basically we, we're just testing out the Siberian Larch on the, the window reveal. And you can see we've got the vertical timbers and the horizontal timbers to pick up the rest of the cladding. And that space behind the horizontal timbers is where we'll run the, the, uh, the downpipes uh, from the gutters. We've, we're waiting on some flashings for the heads. Um, and again, we're waiting on being able to put the gutters in place. Once we do that, it's another six weeks before we'll get the uh, Siberian Larch. We didn't want to order it too soon because really they want you to put it up sort of two to four weeks after receiving it. Um, they don't want it sitting around for a long time, basically. Again, from the windows, you can kind of see, you can kind of see this little, basically between the, the black uh, membrane and the window is a little foam material that's called copper band. And that is what effectively seals that gap makes it airtight. This is this special tape that we're applying. So there's, they've gone, they've gone and, and um, it looks like they're about to seal that bit as well. So they will apply a primer, which is where the concrete is dark. They're about 30 mil. And then they'll tape over that and join the, uh, the DPM to the plinth. And again, it's just, just to help keep the weather out basically. So, um, but the, the tape is incredibly expensive, but and that's one of those crucial areas that you need to make sure is sealed properly. This is plot five. So that's the garage. And this little flat roof covered area and the house starts at this peg here. And goes all the way up to those those little timber form, um, but half of its basement. So that's why they've dug out 
only half of it. Obviously, we've got all the footings and stuff to dig out for the rest of this. Um, this is quite, this is quite complex. I've started digging out for plot four as well, which is narrower but longer. Well, that's it, really. Um, I think next time we'll be out here, we'll probably be pouring the floors for some of these basements, maybe working on the steel work for the walls. Hopefully, we'll be filming a bit on the roof with Katnik, providing they're, they're ready. We might even have Siberian clad, um, the Siberian larch cladding, and uh, we can show you a little bit about how we install that. And we should be well on with Plot 9 installation of the SIP structure, and that's something we haven't really filmed much in detail, so hopefully we can show you a bit of that as well. So until next time. This is eight. So, um, they're supposed to be pouring half, half of the remaining half tomorrow, but um, I'm not sure if they're ready or not, so. I have to crack the whip.